Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's long-range U.S.-focused forecast video brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. This analysis is being provided for perspective only, and any decision made based upon this presentation is the sole responsibility of the person making the decision. Finally, please remember that long-range weather forecasting is speculative by nature. Well, the context of the video begins here. We're looking at corn planting progress compared to the 2014 to 2018 average, and the numbers that came out on uh, Monday painted uh, a pretty startling picture here. It was one that we expected, given the forecast recently but these numbers are just uh, almost unprecedented. And this is what I mean. We've been looking at this series of lines here on this graph for the last several weeks, and what we're analyzing here is corn planting progress. And each line represents a different year from 1990 all the way to 2019. And we've been discussing how the slope of the 2019 line was continued to be quite flat. Now we're sitting right here right now over in this area, and the question will be, will week 20, when the data come in, uh, be the slowest planting progress we've had since 1990. In other words, we're about to pass 2013. Now when I just kind of look historically at the slope of all of the lines from week 19 on, you know, in general things tend to move at about this pace. And the question is, will we do something like that in this next week? Now, we have had a pretty decent stretch of, of days here recently across parts of the Corn Belt uh, where we at least haven't had the massive flooding rains, although there have been rains that have kept some folks out of the field. But for most of the farmers that I get to discuss uh, the, the, this planting progress with, they say, you know, I, I need seven to ten days of hot and dry conditions. And so the question is, are we going to get it? And if we don't, you know, while I don't think we're going to continue on this flatline trajectory like this, getting over into this area is more than likely the solution that we're going to be seeing. Putting 2019 as the slowest planting progress since uh, 1990 here. And uh, why I say that is because of this. Here is the national blended model. This was run just early this morning looking all the way out to the 23rd, so 7 p.m. on the 23rd at total accumulated precipitation. Now remember, what NOAA does here is that they're putting together the best models in the, in the world, including the European model and the G. EFS and several other models and kind of blending together their best you know picture of what they think the next uh, nine days are going to look like here and you can clearly see that sections of the middle section uh, of the mid part of the Corn Belt getting over to the western Corn Belt in the north central plains to be wet we're gonna be extremely wet along the west coast as well look out there in California uh, precipitation we're picking up in fact in the Sierra Nevada we may pick up over three feet of snow uh, out of this what's going on big high pressure system sitting over the southeast that's developing while these troughs keep swinging through and every time we see this pattern this time of year we're just bringing in an abundant amount of gulf moisture and we're at a time period where the atmosphere is most unstable throughout the year so we are talking about a multi-day severe weather outbreak event through a large section of the country i mean shoot even today we're looking at some nasty storms that could move through parts of north dakota a multi-day severe weather event through the next seven to eight days kind of inside of this area that I've circled right in through here. And so if you're in this area, we're going to have to just watch very carefully for what these storms are going to be doing in the coming days. Just to show you some model comparison, these are the brand new updates from last night. Over here on the left, I have the GFS model looking at total accumulated precipitation. And just so you know, when you start to get into those deeper reds right in through here, we're talking between two and four inches of rain. We make the switch over to these colors when we're talking about possibly getting over five inches of rain. So you can see both the GFS and the ECMWF. Now, again, these are both operational model runs are picking up on some places in the Western Corn Belt, picking up a lot of precipitation. The GFS in the most recent few runs have backed off on rainfall in the Eastern Corn Belt. And if I were to say there's a place in the Corn Belt that has the least amount of worry out of the next several systems, it would be the Eastern Corn Belt, although we're still expecting precipitation. The GF, uh, sorry, the European model has actually made things a little bit wetter over here. So both models uh, kind of moving uh, away from their original solutions. One, the European European model towards wetter conditions in the Eastern Corn Belt, uh, the GFS towards a little bit drier. But together, they're kind of painting a very similar picture for the next 10 days. And that's why I don't expect uh, 2019 to make the rapid planting progress. Even though this week has been a better week for many, uh, I don't expect it to make the rapid planting progress that we would hope to see. Now, to put it all together out to the next 15 days, because I really want to get to the longer range stuff here, this is the European Ensemble. So we're looking at a 51 member ensemble and you can just see the dominance of that southeastern ridge. I mean, just look at the flow pattern. It is just doing this and that ridge is just keeping things shut down over the southeast. And the US model is almost in complete agreement with what the European says. I mean, you don't see much of a difference between the two right now when you look at their ensemble members here. 
Uh, so this is impressive model agreement as to what this pattern is going to be doing. Okay, talk temperatures really quickly here. Over the next five days, because of the ridge that's trying to build in the middle part of the country here, we do see warmer conditions. But look what happens once we get out to day 6 through 10. So we can really see that pattern just evolving here. Now there is one thing I, I am absolutely afraid to say, and it is I got to show you this map. This is just looking at the next 10 days where the probability is of picking up an inch of snow. We may have some problems here in the high plains, getting over to the western sides of North and South Dakota and Nebraska, getting into parts of Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana with the systems that are going to curl up in the midsection of the country and race on off to the north and east. They are going to have cold air that sneaks in on the back side, and this is just a non-zero chance for snow. Uh, I hate to have to say that, but you can see the probabilities are low when you get farther to the east. Uh, you know, down here in the 20 to, to, to maybe up to 40%, but as you go back farther west, these probabilities are getting a bit higher. Uh, so that's a scary part of this forecast when you get this active pattern with plenty of cold air to still tap into. When we take it out to the 11 to 15 day forecast, one thing is for certain, the rapid accumulation of grain degree day units, which we've had down here in the south where I just circled, that's going to continue. But we're still going to be making some progress here across the eastern Corn Belt uh, with picking up some, some heat over the next several days. Uh, but again, the bigger story is the heavy, heavy rains across the midsection of the country and the multi-day severe weather outbreak. Now again, the pattern that's causing this is this highly amplified pattern like this, where this southeastern ridge is just dominating. Flow comes in, trough, this is the main lift, just creates system after system that goes right through the middle part of the country. Look out here to day 15. By day 15, we start to see some anomalously higher heights here. We start to see this trough progressing east, but still the, the European model wants to keep a ridge here over the southeast, which means through the end of May, I expect this pattern to stay active. Now, my big question I'm trying to answer in this forecast, because this is a long-range forecast, and I'll cover these details about the next two weeks in the video that will come out tomorrow morning. My question is, does this pattern continue into June? Okay. Now, we have been in a wet pattern. Bullet point number two says, uh, why? We've had high global angular momentum. Now, what does that mean? That just basically means the atmosphere, as it moves around planet Earth, it's just cooking right now. It's moving fast. The Pacific jet stream has been the telltale sign of this. We've seen it very uh, move very, very quickly. This is very common during springs with an, a positive ENSO signal. What's ENSO? El Nino and the Southern Oscillation. So with El Nino, a weak El Nino going on right now, getting these positive westerly wind anomalies. This is just helping the whole system move. The Mad Julian Oscillation has been helping out with this. The warm ocean temperatures in the Pacific and off the southeast coast keeps reinforcing that southeastern ridge and the fast moving jet stream. And we really lacked any dominant high latitude blocking that's impacted the weather of the United States. So my question is, did the European model, which was run several days ago back at the very beginning of May, did it get June right? Now, what is it calling for for June? Remember, this cooler corridor in here that's very active on precipitation. So a lot of this is cloud cover dominated uh, due to all that precipitation, and it's calling for wet. Where is it dry? Well, maybe over the south and east, maybe around some of the Great Lakes states. And my question I'm trying to answer is, well, now that I've gotten you know another uh, you know 10 days beyond when this forecast was initialized, would the model, if it was run today on the long-range forecast, still say the same thing? So let me offer my perspective on this, okay? Here at first is the National Multimodel Ensemble. It is in lockstep with the European model, okay? So we now have uh, all these models run in North America plus the European model basically saying the same thing. So I wanted to know what it would take to get us out of this extremely wet pattern. So I gathered for the central region, and just to kind of show you, this is the region over which I am creating these maps. Okay, so I went and got historical data from the central region, which is again right in through here, and I said, all right, what do our driest Junes on record look like? Now, please understand this. There are some exceptionally dry Junes in this. Like, look at my top two driest Junes, 88 and 2012. But you can see the other years that were included in this analysis. And let me just show you what the flow pattern of the atmosphere must do. It's got a feature, a ridge that's over the Aleutian Islands, some sort of trough feature that's near the west coast of the United States, but really more uh, sitting in the Gulf of Alaska, a big ridge that sits somewhere in the north central plains, 
in a trough just near the east coast building into a ridge south of Greenland. Now that highly amplified pattern, if it gets blocked and stuck into that configuration, we're going to flip over quickly to a hot, dry, kind of summer-like pattern in June. And I want to know, is there any reason to think that this might happen? That's my point here. I'm just wanting to know if there's any reason to think that's going to happen. Well, certainly through the end of May, no. Look at what we've got. Remember I said we wanted a, a trough here? Nope, we got a ridge. Our trough is sitting in the west and a ridge over the southeast. And that pattern, I kind of denote it here for you, just keeps things very active in this section of the country where I'm coloring right now. But look at this. Let me show you what the first week of June looks like. Now, when you look at this with me, I see a ridge here and I see a ridge there. Now look, I'm going to go back. Look at this. There was a ridge and there was a ridge. So I see those two things there and I see over on the, just follow the height lines with me. This here. That's much, much different than what we've been seeing. So what I'm trying to tell you right now is that as we get into June, the models right now, the latest run from the European Ensemble that goes out 46 days, okay, it right now is saying that by the time we get to the beginning of June, the flow of the atmosphere is not like it is right now. That's all that it's saying. And what it is right now is extremely active, western U.S. trough, southeast ridge, sucking up the moisture, big time severe with outbreak. That pattern right there that you're looking at that I just drew, that says, hey, that's kind of like what we typically see in summer. Look at this. This is now June 7th through June 14th. I still see this pattern in the height lines. And again, if I see a ridging pattern in the midsection of the country, that tells me we go over to more convective activity that's not in these giant low pressure systems, but more individual thunderstorm clusters, more squall lines, more individual convective events, not big pattern driven, you know, low pressure systems. And look, I'll even show you what the Europe, I'm sorry, what the CFSB2, this is running the United States, is showing. Week three, which is the end of May, beginning of June, notice they don't have much of a signal at all for the US. They instead have this high or low pattern. But if we keep this low here, this more than likely means ridging in that area, coming around this trough that you see over here. And then for week four, which is uh, June 5th through June 11th, they've now got, gosh, a pattern that kind of does something more like this. And that, to me, it, it's just a different look. It's a different look from what we've got right now. Now, to be honest with you, when I see this kind of discrepancy looking longer term, it tells me, it says Snodgrass, don't forecast outside of the 10 to 15 day time period. Just don't go outside of there because you're going to lose every time because the pattern is just not fully able to be diagnosed. But in this video, we're supposed to be speculative, and that's what I'm doing for us here, okay? So let me just tell you this. What could go wrong? What could go wrong in this forecast? Well, if the Pacific jet stream just stays on its high horse and keeps flying across the midsection of the atmosphere uh, there and in, in, in over the Pacific Ocean, hey, we're going to keep this pattern going. If I see the southeastern ridge redevelop, if it just goes back into that mode, of we're going to stay wet in the mid part of the country. If a big blocking ridge sets up over Alaska and western Canada, that tends to just dip the jet stream there in the, in the central United States and we get back into an active pattern. And if the westerly wind anomalies in the Enso region, that's the El Nino region, remain high, that means we're going to stay in this wet pattern. Now, what am I talking about there? Well, I borrowed this from a colleague. His name's Michael Ventris. He makes these beautiful, what we call Hovmuller diagrams. And now I know this is a little bit nerdy here, but do you see this right in through here? This is the central kind of uh, Western Pacific. And where these reds show up, this is where we've had where these stronger westerly wind anomalies have been. Look in the forecast. As we move toward the end of the month, we don't see them. Sorry, let me get my drawings up there. We don't see them continue to stay as strong as they have been for the end of April and beginning of May moving forward. So that's another clue that maybe there's a bit of a pattern change happening. Now, look at this. If it does break down, look at my bullet points here. Expect a rapid transition into what I would call very much summer-like weather in June. In fact, might feel like we miss out on, on, on you know, the, maybe more typical spring weather. We're going to go straight into this summer. This means hit or miss thunderstorm activity. This may means we have northwest flow aloft through the Corn Belt. And that may keep some wet, but not everybody. What you need to hear me say is my confidence is pretty low. I'm going to have to keep looking at this week after week to see how the coming six weeks to two to, to three months unfolds here. 
But with that, now that you've kind of seen my perspective on the longer term stuff, I'm going to ask you just to stay in tune with me on my short range forecast. The short range forecast we put together, Andrew Pritchard and I, every single day. Let's live within the next two weeks so that we don't miss big on some of the features that could be impacting the way this crop develops in 2019 across the whole country. Okay, with that, I'm going to wrap it up right there. We at Nutrient Ag Solutions hope you look forward to our next long-range forecast discussion. We hope you have a great week, and we will talk to you again soon. Thank you.